Welcome to the All Voices Career Growth and Development Podcast. My name is Thomas Ressler, he, him, and his, and I'm a partnerships manager here at All Voices. Uh, today, I'm very excited to welcome our next guest onto the interview series, Jason, who is the Director of Talent and Development at Echo Global Logistics. Jason, thank you so much for being here today and joining me on the podcast. Uh, if you want to share a little bit about yourself for our listeners, including your pronouns, and when you, you were younger, how exactly did you answer the question of what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> Great. Love it. Uh, he, him, and his. So Jason Barry, I am Director of Talent Development, as you mentioned, at Echo Global Logistics. Been here for 10 years. Uh, I have a pretty large training team compared to others in, in, in my field. We've got 14 trainers and we cover 30 branch locations and about 900 plus new hires a year. So we keep ourselves busy and, and have a lot going on. Um, as far as what I wanted to be when I grew up, you know, I, I, I can truthfully tell you as a, as a little kid, I never, that, that really wasn't something that crossed my line a lot. I just love to play sports. I love to uh, be active and, and things like that. So, you know, I, I think I wanted to maybe be a pro athlete or something like that because I, I, I was a big time soccer player and played through college and whatnot. But um, I was definitely not ever the kid that was like, I want to be president someday or something. I just enjoyed being active and doing my thing. So. Awesome. Yeah. I also played soccer as well. So I kind of have the nice. mindset as you and uh, yeah, 900 employees a year uh, is a, you know, that's quite some growth. So that's, that's really impressive. And uh, Jason, what defines you? What defines me? You know, I would, I would say I'm very big on just my brand in general and, and having that help be something that defines me, whether it's um, I mean, literally anything the the projects I take on the actions I do, the people I, want to reach out to and talk doing things like this, like, the, like our podcast, um, from my haircut to my clothes. Like I always want to do something that is, you know, gets the brand out there, makes it memorable, but also creates a, a, a positive and, and unique experience to those I interact with, whether it's new hires, my employees, people that I've just met, et cetera. So I, I'm, I'm very big on brand and just personal growth. It's huge for me. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. You know, I believe it's uh, that's a beautiful perspective to look at life with. And I can definitely appreciate that and also try to do similar things in my life as well. You know, try to keep it interesting and, and stand out. And uh, and how do you think your personal journey up to this point has led you to Echo Global Logistics? You know, it's uh, I mean, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey and it's taken a lot of twists and turns, which, you know, I think happens for a lot of people, especially that reach some level of success. but you know, my first, I said, I've been here for 10 years, my first six years out of college, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I um, started working at a clothing store called the buckle right out of school, figured I could meet girls there. <laughs> had no <laughs> idea what else, what else I really wanted to do with my life. And, you know, I, I will say, I must have had at least decent judgment, because I did meet my wife there. So it actually worked out. Oh, there you um, go. Yeah, so it, had that going for me, but no, I mean, I, I, I bounced around in retail management for multiple companies, um, did some stuff. Like I drove a bread truck for a year and I was a manager at a Best Buy and sold cell phones. And I just did all sorts of stuff, just not really knowing what I wanted to do. But, you know, in hindsight, it, I learned a lot about hard work, especially, you know, doing things like driving a bread truck route for a year where, you know, my, my days were starting at two 30 in the morning and driving on trucks that sometimes the heater didn't work. And I grew up in Iowa. So, you know, when it's minus 23 degrees outside and you're driving a truck and you're double layered up in Under Armour and whatnot, it's a, it's, it's a, it's an eye opening experience when you're 26 years old, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, a lot of those things just really led to my journey to echo and realizing that, you know, like once I got my foot in the door here and recognized that it was a company that was growing and, that I could make a mark for myself here. It's just been, you know, head down, grinding it out for ever since then. And just realizing, you know, even starting out as a entry level sales rep and making 80 phone calls a day, it's like thinking about the days on the bread truck or working crazy hours in retail and stuff. It's like the worst thing I ever had to do starting at Echo was make a bunch of phone, call, phone calls inside an air conditioned office. Like <laughs> things could be worse, you know? So it's just always, I've had that perspective and like, I just never, never lose sight of the fact that I didn't used to have weekends and I didn't used to have, um, a nice space around me and stuff like that. So it's, it's, uh, 
it's it's kind of wild to think back on but it's been it's been awesome I, I definitely wouldn't be where i am today without those experiences so yeah of course i'm sure it's been a crazy journey you know i love that and i feel like everyone definitely has their their different path in life and and i can appreciate all the change ups that you've made throughout your life and you know everyone is definitely different and i think that's kind of important to know and appreciate especially when it comes to career growth and development mm -hmm. as well and so jason how do you measure the success of your career growth and uh, development initiatives and projects? I mean, I, I probably the easy answer is money, but that's not, <laughs> that's not the, uh, that's certainly not the only one, you know, I'm just always thinking about what, you know, what kind of fills my bucket is, is really, is really where I come at this from. And it's, it's, I'm in a lucky spot because I do truly, it sounds cheesy, but I truly, truly enjoy coming to work every day. Like I love what I do. I love my team. I love my role in the company. I love the um, not just the industry I specifically work in, but also the industry that like my career is a part of that, that learning and development and talent industry. And it's, it's really what just continues to drive me in the sense of, I, I love seeing these employees grow and develop their careers. And, you know, whether it's, whether it's at Echo or somewhere else, but, but seeing them take these steps from, you know, a lot of times it's like, this is their first job out of school to watching them truly grow up and become like professional people is is great and you know the same thing with employees on my team of watching them grow from a trainer to a senior trainer to a manager to you know doing all these things and it's it's just exciting i feel like there's there's really nothing better than um being able to like go through these experiences myself and then help others do the same thing as that as they grow um that's that's always my favorite part is like just talking with people and talking about careers and overcoming things and, and sharing some of the stuff I've been through. And, you know, I, I haven't been through everything yet either. Um, so I also really enjoy finding those relationships that have been through additional things that I have that I can talk about. But I think, I think just the whole like idea of coaching has always been kind of in my blood. Um, you know, even when I was playing soccer that we mentioned, mm -hmm. once I got into the coaching side of that, which I did for about eight years, um, that always, I think even, filled my bucket more so than the plane did as much as much fun as plane was and you know I, I probably I, I don't think I realized it at the time but I feel like I was sort of meant to be just like a coach to others so yeah I love that yeah I have uh, I have three younger brothers that also play soccer as well and I'm, I'm bringing them to tryouts all the time I did yeah. the other day so I can definitely see it's funny being on the other side and bringing them to practices and you know and uplifting them and supporting them like no matter what they do and That's I also cool. like how you introduced that idea that, you know, like money always comes to mind first, but definitely feel like it's important, you know, to look behind that and, and bring people up around you. So, and especially for your employees to feel like supported and appreciated. And, and I can definitely tell that you, you know, support them and do appreciate them. So yeah. I definitely appreciate the fact that you lift up others like that. And, and Jason, how is Echo Global Logistics honoring, celebrating and recognizing top employees this year? And how does this positively impact theirs and others' upward mobility at Echo? That's, it's, it's actually great timing on that question because we, we just signed on with a, a new vendor for this called Nectar, um, oh. which, which has, I don't know if you've heard of that before or not, but um, it's, it's really, really helped us like completely dive into the whole you know, rewards, recognition, all the employees on the floor get points that they can give out and those points can be redeemed for you know whether it's um, you know, like some echo swag or things from our own echo store, or even beyond that, you know, if it's like Amazon points or, you know, whatever the case is, but it's, it's just a great little system because everybody's tied into it. It recognizes anniversaries. It recognizes birthdays. It, it basically makes it impossible for, you know, even someone like me, you know, I've got 14 people on my team, but even, you know, the larger teams out there where they've got 20, 30 plus, like it's, it's, uh, you can't forget birthdays and anniversaries and stuff like that because the, the, the system's there to help you out. But what I really love about it, honestly, is just the social aspect of being able to recognize others and anybody in the company can see when somebody gets recognized. So like Thomas, if I recognized you on that platform and gave you 10 points for something, uh -huh. everybody would be able to see it. People could like it. People could comment on it. Somebody else could chime in and give you five more points because they think you're awesome and want you to have some more. Um, and it's it's just one of those things where like, just from a peer um, kind of culture building community recognition standpoint, that's been, that's been an awesome add to our, to our day to day, you know, along with some of the probably more obvious um, workplace types of recognitions, which is, you know, raises and promotions and 
company shout outs and, you know, we've got annual sales trips and all those kind of things that we do, but being able to do something like this, where it's, it's just those constant little daily reminders of like, Hey, you're awesome. Like those, those go a long way with employees. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds perfect. I actually, I don't believe I've heard of Nectar before, but I'll definitely have to take a look into it. So it, it essentially operates as like a point system where it's a, like an application that you log into. And, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it, it almost looks like a Twitter feed kind of, you know, so you've got like we, you, you can even, pro, we have, we have hashtags pro, programmed into it. So our, our um, company values are programmed in there. So if, you know, if, if I want to say like, work hard and hustle is one of our values. And if I want to tell somebody like, Hey, I really appreciate the work you've been doing over the last week on um, getting all these new hires onboarded. I can post that on there. Anybody can see it, but maybe I'll throw out 30 points to them. That way they can redeem it towards a Amazon gift card or something. And then it'll, I'll put hashtag work hard and hustle. And so it just, it just kind of looks like a Twitter feed. It's, it's, it's very fun. Um, especially in that sort of like company culture, cheesy kind of way that, that, is it's just those little things that, you know it's again like i mentioned like it's it's great to get awards and it's great to get promotions and like that's what we all strive for obviously but those little just high fives and handshakes and uh, public public shout outs go a lot further than i think a lot of people realize and it's uh it's it's been like that whole platform has been on fire for us here the since we rolled it out it's been it's been awesome yeah, I think that recognition really does go a long way, like you were saying, for employees to know that they're, you know, or are being seen for their actions. And I'm definitely going to take a look into that. So thank you for sharing that with me, yeah. Jason. And uh, yeah, it does sound like a fun system. And, and also, how can organizations identify stagnant employees and proactively develop them in the company? So how would you influence someone to be the best they can for both the company and themselves? So that there's a you know, there's a couple of things that come to mind. I mean, first and foremost, hope, hopefully companies are doing things like annual reviews and and mid year checkpoints and and those kind of things where where it's not just looking at are you hitting your numbers and if not, you know what are we what are we going to do about it? But but looking more into you know what what goals do you have for yourself this year and you know how how are you actually feeling about your employment? Is this what you want to be doing? Would you is there something else in the business that you recognize that would be more in line with like where your passion is and things like that? So, yeah, I mean, if you have like the obvious stuff that, you know, like I said, I, I would hope most companies are doing those things, which is those, those annual and, and mid-year types of performance checkpoints. But, you know, beyond that, it's, it's really, it really comes down to also making sure that your managers are trained to be leaders and not just, not just managers, right. And not, not just looking at the numbers, like I mentioned, and not just um, strictly focused on performance, because there's there's a lot of things that can play into somebody's performance, right? Like, are, are they happy at their job? Are they are they worried about something? Is there something going on that we don't know about? And and truly being able to sit down with your employee and have a conversation about not just work, but you know, maybe starting that conversation with how are you doing today? Um, and today being the key word there, because it's not just how are you doing? That's always the stock. I'm fine. You know, but like, how are you literally doing today? Like, that's what, that's what I want to know. And, it, it, and if, if that's not great, then, you know, why not? What's up? Is it something we can talk about? Is it something I can help you with? And, and, you know, I, I, that's, you know, that can be a miss for a lot of, a lot of new managers, especially, you know, is, is you get so focused on is the job being performed well that you miss on, you miss some of the other things that are out there um, that may lead to a better performance. And so employees knowing they're supported and knowing that their manager has their back and that the company has their back and, you know, we want to see you grow. And it's not just um, me trying to keep you specifically on my team so that you perform well, so that I look good. Um, th those, those things go a long way. And we've, we've been putting a lot of investment here recently, especially into training our managers to be true leaders of people, which is exciting. Yeah, awesome. I mean, I, I feel like helping people find out what exactly they, they like to do and maybe helping them make a lateral switch can definitely yep. have a powerful impact on both their personal and professional lives. Like if the, if, if the employees are happy, then the company as a whole is definitely going to function more effectively, of course. And uh, I love that part of kind of taking a step back and really asking someone like how they're doing, you know, how is their day going or, you know, and I think that goes a long way with helping someone feel supported. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. And I, you know, I would even add, you know, when it comes to career development and personal development, stuff like that, it's, it's, you know, obviously we want 
people to be good echo employees, but you know, it's, it's also realistic to understand that most employees aren't going to stick around 10 years like I have, or, uh, you know, beyond that. So, you know, I also want them to know that they, and, and echo wants them to know that they have the life skills to be successful beyond just what they do here at echo. Um, because you know, that's, that's important. And it, it also realistically, um, comes back around to, to be great for the company as well, because they go to their next role and, you know, you get things like, well, you know, everything I learned about sales or operations or whatever the case is, like I learned a lot of that at Echo and they taught me the skills and they recommend other people to come work at our company. And so it's, it's just always good to have that bigger holistic view of, um, you know, even if, even if people leave and people are going to leave, like that's just the way it is. Uh, you you want to make sure that they felt like they were supported while they were here so that they can carry that on elsewhere, which is. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. I think uh, helping people become the best version of themselves is, is, is honestly more important than just having them become the best employee they, they mm-hmm. possibly can. Cause I think they, you know, they kind of influence each other hand in hand. And, uh, and how do you build career maps and, and trust within the company so that employees have the confidence that their hard work will lead to promotions instead of something like hiring from outside of the organization to uh, the positions that your existing employees desire? Yeah, so th- there's a few ways to do that. We actually, uh, right now, our HR team specifically is has been really piloting um, career mapping and, and laying out sort of intra-department growth and inter-department growth with our technology group. We have, we have a very large technology portion here at Echo. Uh, you know, we're, we're a very technology-focused logistics company with a lot of like in, in-house proprietary technology and things like that. So we have, we have a larger tech group than most. And that's, that's been a big focus of theirs right now is, you know, where can they not just grow within their role, but what are, what are, what are some of those like intra department growth paths for them? And really just laying that out. Like if I'm here at level X, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here uh, and, and making it much more clear that just because your role today is whatever that role is, it doesn't mean you have to grow in those exact steps. I mean, mm-hmm. take me, for example. I mean, I, I started in client sales and then was a sales manager and then I was in operations and then I ended up over on the training team and um, now I run the whole training department. So, I mean, it's, it, it wasn't a direct path, but it, it, it's just understanding that, you know, you've got these things like working hard, focusing on the, the core competencies of, you know, like, are you doing the things that you need to do to be successful at your role? Because if you are, then other managers in that department are going to see that like this person's coachable, this person can learn, this person will put in the effort. So it's, it's worth looking at somebody that may not have that exact background, but you know, they'll come in and do the work and learn the role and, and go from there. Yeah. I, yeah, I think uh, creating career maps and, and giving employees goals to reach that they, uh, they know are possible to reach really helps someone yeah. see the light at the end of the tunnel as well. The and, other, the other, the other thing I would add there too, not to cut you off is um, in, in tech as well, we've, we've partnered with a company called Udemy. I don't know oh, if you've heard yeah. of them. I have. Um, I yeah, but they, they do some really cool like learning path and career mapping stuff as well. So being able to, you know, really tie these because you, you know, me will provide like, you know, trainings and things like that. So being able to provide like if somebody wants to go a certain route, it can actually like map out a little bit of a training program to give them the skills or things necessary to go like the direction that they want to go if they want to grow into another role, um, mm-hmm. things like that. So, you know, that that's super exciting and stuff that ultimately will help out everybody but um just just some just some really cool things like that that you know we're always we're always trying to try some new things or give give people resources to be able to to be able to grow and learn yeah i love as well that you uh you know that not everyone's the same of course and sometimes people like you know want to make a lateral switch and i find it interesting how many departments you've been with too at echo because i feel like it kind of gives you a unique unique perspective on on each individual department and you you kind of know how it works and so i think that's you know really, really powerful, powerful as you're yeah. supporting their growth. It's, with it's not, it's not common, but I've had my, my stat, I won't be able to use a stat for much longer, but I've had 10 roles in 10 years. 10 um, roles in 10 years. Yeah, so I'll, I'll soon be at 11 years. So that stat won't be quite as, quite as cool sounding, but um, again, that's, that's not, that's not the normal career path, but just the way it's worked out for me with taking some opportunities and growing quickly in a few and, you know, moving to Chicago from Dallas and things like that. It's just a, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just sort of worked out that way. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty wild to think about that being my path, but, um, yeah. you know, here we are. So 
Yeah, that that is incredible. That's that's definitely a, a really impressive statistic, Jason. I, I love that. <laughs> and uh, and how do you see uh, employee feedback management as an important tool to identify whether uh, employees are happy in their department, you know, who want to grow within their department, or are are unhappy and maybe need a lateral change? Yeah, that that's. I mean, that's huge. And I think I don't think you know that's even unique to Echo here, especially over the last couple of years of of trying to think about, you know, like our, our employees happy or what do they want to do? And, you know, we've been through a weird, a weird period here, of, uh, trying oh, yeah. to connect with our employees at a different level. And, you know, we're not seeing them every day like we were before. And, you know, so we've, um, kind of sound like a pitch man for all these tools, but there's another, there's a platform we brought on that's, it's worth mentioning through a company called sure people. We use their workforce X platform, which they help us do, uh, basically like pulse surveys and, and um, annual annual reviews for that. So that's one step. And one of the things that we've adopted from that is, you know, we just recently did a, it was essentially a 80 question survey. So, I mean, it was, it was very, it was very in depth and sent out to the whole company. And mm-hmm. one big thing for us on that was also being completely transparent about like the results of that survey and what, it, what do people really like about Echo and what do people not like, or where are employees dissatisfied and, um, after getting the results to, to that survey, we, we did a whole town hall with our company president and he literally shared the results with everybody of like, here's where you guys are telling us we're doing a great job. And here's where you're telling us that we could do better. Um, and being able to actually commit to actions from that and, and let them see, like, it's not just like, okay, we hear you, you feel burnt out or whatever they're feeling. And then just moving on, it's like, okay, you feel this way. And here's what we're going to do over the next six months to actually address that and, and make those changes. Um, you know, and if you get that onto a more micro level, going back to, you know, again, teaching managers to ha- to do the things that lead their people of weekly checkpoints and making sure that you're talking to them and finding out what they like to do. And, you know, if you have somebody that's a high potential employee on your team, you know, do we put them on an IDP, which is an individual individual development program to where we can like truly focus out their, their training. You know, I've done, I've done this with several employees where it's, you already do a great job at your role. So now it's like, let's get really nitty gritty and nitpicky on, we're not going to talk about all the things that you do all the time. Cause you, we've talked about that a lot. Like mm-hmm. here's, here's these little tiny things that we can tweak and may, maybe it's going to be a little uncomfortable, but what we really want to do is like, if you want to get to director VP, whatever the case is, like, here's the stuff that we really want to target and then work on. And we can re- literally lay out a path of like over the next 18 months, these are the steps we're going to take. These are the people you're going to have meetings with and talk to. And um, hopefully by the end of that time, like if your goal is to be promoted into this role, let's see if we can get you there at that point or sooner. And partnering with HR and leaders and everything like that throughout the process is it's, it's really fun. It's cool. It's a cool thing to do for employees. Yeah, I love that. You know, I, I, I personally believe that employee feedback is, is such an incredible and an important tool. That's obviously why I'm with the company that I'm yeah. right now and, and to utilize it, especially so that employees like can become the best version of themselves and, and know that they're going to have an open line of com- communication and that someone is actually going to make an actionable change, you know, yeah. if, they, if they choose to use that line of communication. It's so definitely important to know that, you know, the actionable changes is on the other side, essentially. Mm-hmm. And, and so how does uh, employee feedback promote growth at Echo Global Logistics as well? And how does, you know, building trust amongst employees relate to growth at Echo? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think one of the biggest testaments to that is we, we have quite a bit of internal growth and, and internal promotion. I mean, again, I, I'm, I'm one of those examples, somebody that started at the ground level and I'm at a director level. And, you know, we've been a company that, when I started at Echo, it was, the company was six years old. We're, you know, 15, 16 years old now. Um, and a lot of our, a lot of our leadership has grown. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of leaders around me or, or other directors or people in senior manager roles that I've literally seen like grow alongside me and, and um, become leaders in this company. And that's a big part of it is just, you know, a trusting that, you know, we have these employees and they're doing a great job and that we can, Maybe they don't have experience being a senior manager, but mm-hmm. we know that we're going to give them the tools and the skill set and the support that they need. And we know that in return, they're going to put in the effort and the things that they need to do to take that role. So it makes sense to bring, bring up somebody internally versus always looking externally for a role like that, right? Because they also already know the business and they know the people. And um, it's, it's, it's very rewarding for other, other employees to see that like 
you know, I don't have to go somewhere else to find my next role. Like I can, I can actually literally do that here. Um, and that's, that's been a, that's been a huge part of it. And just, you know, I can even say for me personally, like I have always 100% trusted that echo is going to do the right thing by me, um, Mm -hmm. and for me. And, you know, as long as I do the things that I'm being asked, and as long as they're transparent to me about what they need, I know that that's ultimately going to work out for me in the long run. If I just have a little patience and, you know, do the things I need to do. So I would say that that whole employee trust and, and things like that is huge. Yeah, I, I kind of think it's it, that kind of relates back to that, uh, you know, light at the end of the tunnel idea that I was talking about before. And especially if, if they see, you know, their their coworkers, you mm-hmm. know, being promoted and, and going through these changes like that and, and knowing that they're, you know, there is essentially a light at the end of the tunnel and they can they can grow at their own company. Like, I think that's incredibly important. So I really like your mindset on that. And I also like how you're able to bring your, you know, personal experiences into uh, into your work life. It, to be able to pos- positively impact your your team around you as well. And yeah. so uh, how do you balance promoting someone up and, and giving them time to ramp up before they're getting results as to uh, opposed to hiring someone externally? You know, a lot of it's just good. What I would say is that that's where, when I was talking earlier about developing your people and you know, recognizing them for their strengths and stretching them where maybe they need a little help and with, with things like IDPs and, and whatnot. It's it's one of those things where, you know, if, if I want to promote somebody from a trainer to a senior trainer, or from a senior trainer to a manager on my team, by the time I'm promoting them, I am very confident that they can do the job. You know, yeah. I, I, so, I know that there's going to be some learning and, you know, they may say the wrong thing at one point, or maybe they don't have um, the cadence that they need to have with their employees right out the gate to schedule. I mean, it's, you know, it's, we've all been there, but it's pretty overwhelming to get a new job and especially to be like a manager for the first time. But the one thing I'm almost never concerned about because I've spent time with these employees and I know them and I, I, I've helped develop them is that, you know, the, their attitude is in the right spot and their mindset's in the right spot. And I know they're going to work hard and I know they know the business or I know they, you know, I know they've got the, um, like the culture buy-in or, you know, whatever, whatever that skill set is you're looking for. So really all it is, is a mat is a matter of learning how to become a better leader or to take on this additional responsibility that maybe you didn't have at a manager level that you now have at a senior manager level or from a senior manager level to a director level. And, um, but I mean, the whole reason they're being promoted in the first place is because you believe that they can do that role. So you have to give them time to, to fail up right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's okay to mess up and make mistakes. I've done it. We've all done it. And for them to know that they can mess up and it's not, that doesn't mean their job's on the line. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that also goes back to the trust you were talking about. Like, it's okay for my employees. My employees make plenty of mistakes. Like, you know, not to swear, but like shit happens, right? So yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's fine. Like you're going to make mistakes. Hopefully you just don't make that same exact mistake twice and that you learn from it and we go from there. But I, w- I wouldn't, I, I honestly wouldn't promote somebody if I didn't already feel confident they could do the role. Um, and so knowing that it's like, yeah, probably over the next six months, it, you're not going to be, if we were to do a, a performance review on you in six months, I probably wouldn't call you and exceeds expectations, but nor would I expect that to be where you're at, right? It's, mm-hmm. I would expect you to be learning and probably just finally really feeling like you're getting in the group of things in, in six months to where now maybe come annual review time, it's like, now you're really kind of like kicking ass. And now let's start to stretch it over the next year, really see what you're capable of, because we've kind of laid the the base work, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I also think that, you know, hiring someone from outside can be challenging as well, because you're not only ramping them up in just the role, and they don't know how the company structure works yet. They're not familiar with everyone at the company. And I feel like that's what makes it take much more time to, uh, to, you know, learn that role essentially. And yeah. And I, and I, and I would, I mean, I would add obviously like obviously not opposed to hiring external or anything like that. It's just um, you know, I would say it's also one of those things where my department specifically is very unique in those regards because we're hiring trainers that are training, not just industry, but also our systems and, you know, like how things work specifically at echo. Cool. Um, so, you know, especially with my team, it tends to, be almost universally internal hires other teams certainly have like 
external hires and things that yeah. pull in. But um, yeah, for me, for me especially, it's like there, there's a whole level of um, knowledge that you know can be a bit of a gap if you're trying to go outside the walls on that. So yeah, I agree. I, I mean, sometimes it's it's necessary to hire from you know externally to shake things up as well. You know. Yeah. And and so Jason, is there anything else that you'd like to share that I didn't ask, or you know, one to two key insights for? or you hope the listeners bring with them after listening to the podcast? And I would just, I would just say, you know, I, I really hope people are looking to, looking to find things that fill, like fill their bucket and, and doing what they would like to be doing, you know, and it's, it's, uh, I know it's not easy to, you, you can't always be doing exactly what you want to be doing. And, you know, at, at some point there's a level of, I got to pay the bills and I got to do these things, but I, I really hope and I would challenge anybody around me to always be having those conversations with the right people at work and, you know, letting it be known that like, I want to grow, I want to be successful. I want to, I want to make a career out of this and, and just having honest conversations with, with managers and with, with mentors and people around you. Cause as much as, they also want to try, you know, especially a good manager, a good mentor. They want, they want to care about their employees and get to know their employees. You know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know either. And, and as a, as an employee and somebody that wants to grow, like you, you've got to be willing to speak up and, you know, brag about yourself a little bit and, and let them know, like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty great. Like you should, you should pay more attention to me or like, I want to do these things. How do I make it happen? Um, and you know, that's, Personally, that's I've I've always done. I've always gone out and sought a mentor. I've always tried to meet people. I've I've put myself out there. You know, I, I really I really believe in like doing something that truly like makes you uncomfortable every day. Like if you you know, it's just those little things that like work on your skill sets. Like if you're really awkward around people, every time you get in the elevator for the next week, say hi to the people on the elevator. It, yeah. It'll make you feel weird and you'll hate it, but <laughs> at the same time, it teaches you that like it's also going to be fine. Like <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing bad is really going to come from that. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think that would be, that would be my big thing is just, just, you really have to also seize your own career and, you know, watch out for yourself and, and what's best for you. And if you do that, if you have that confidence in yourself and you do the things you need to do, your company's going to see that too. And you're the people around you are going to see that and it's going to be rewarded. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that insight, Jason. You know, I really appreciate your mindset and I, I know that others do as well. So thank you so much for being on the All Voices Career Growth and Development podcast this afternoon. I really enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank awesome. you. And if, uh, if our viewers want to reach out and follow exactly what you're doing, uh, is the best place to find you on LinkedIn or? LinkedIn's fine. I mean, you can, I mean, honestly, I'm on both social platforms. So uh, you can find me on Instagram as well. It's uh, it's an easy name to remember the trendy trainer. <laughs> so there's that. I, I like to have fun on there, but you know, I would say, you know, if, if, if it's really career focused type things, um, LinkedIn would be, would be the spot to go, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for those things. But, you know, I mean, truth be told, if, if anybody ever literally wants to reach out, talk to me, chat about anything, career, whatever, um, I'm, I'm always down to have those types of discussions. So literally even if, if you're listening right now and don't know me but you want to just talk to somebody that's been doing this for a little while like feel free to hit me up i love having those combos so awesome yeah again i appreciate your time and everyone be sure to follow him on linkedin and on instagram the trendy trainer correct yeah that's it awesome and of course as a reminder for the folks that are listening we really believe in employees and employers being seen heard and understand and understood and know that it's a requirement for companies to succeed have a great rest of your, of your I, afternoon, everyone. Can I, can I throw in one more thing too, real quick? Absolutely. Um, just echo.com slash careers. If, if anybody does want to work, look at, you know, getting into logistics or, you know, echo just sounds super cool or anything like that. Um, I would definitely invite people to check out that page and get a good look at, you know, our culture and some of the jobs that are available. We're always hiring. So just want to make sure I, I throw that out there because, um, you know, You'll, you'll get to you'll get to go through training with a with a really cool training team so yeah <laughs> and you'll get to work with Jason so everyone yeah, exactly well thank you for your time Jason I appreciate you all right thanks Thomas. Bye.